Shalom, this video is a Devar Torah and analysis and introduction to the Torah portion Ki Tavo, which begins Deuteronomy chapter 26. It's obviously one of the last portions in the Torah. Moses is giving his final instructions before he passes and the children of Israel enter the Promised Land, which they do in Joshua. Now, the Torah portion begins with a paragraph which many scholars believe to be the oldest historical paragraph in the Bible. It's a paragraph that's recited by us and forms the basis of our Passover Haggadah. It's called Aramia Veda V, and it says in part that when you come to the land of Israel, you shall bring your first fruits and you shall declare the following. My father was a fugitive Aramean who went down to Egypt with meager numbers and sojourned there and became a great and mighty nation. The Egyptians dealt harshly with us and oppressed us and gave us heavy labor. We cried out and God saw our plight and redeemed us with a mighty hand and outstretched arm and brought us to this land. Now it doesn't mention the giving of the Torah, but that's the basis of Jewish history. Uh, it's one of the few places in the Torah where there's actually a set liturgical words. Now most of our prayers are a set liturgy, the Nusach, uh, and there's not that much that comes from the heart, which we, we hope there will be, and people should definitely inject as much personal from the heart prayer as they can. But here in the Bible, it was opposite. People spoke openly to God, and there's very few set liturgical pieces, but this is definitely one of them. Um, then uh, the uh, Torah goes on to talk about how you have affirmed this day the Lord is your God, and you will walk in his ways and observe his commandments. That's chapter 26, verse 17. The Hebrew expression, lelechet bidrachav, forms the basis of the Jewish word for Jewish law, which is halacha, based on the Hebrew word to walk, to walk in God's ways, to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. And then it mentions that when you get there, you have to take these large stones and write the words of the law on them. Uh, and so one of the first things the Israelites did when they entered the land was set up these memorial stones, uh, reminding them of the journey and of God's words. Uh, this portion is most famous for the tochecha. Basically, it says, if you follow God's ways, you will be blessed, and if you don't, you will be cursed. And the curses are horrific. First of all, it mentions uh, the kind of what, what are a curse. And one of them is moving your fellow countrymen's landmark, which is obviously a real estate thing. But in a spiritual sense, it could be t depriving someone or not teaching someone of their Jewish heritage. If you d misdirect a blind person, if you subvert the rights of the stranger, the father, and the widow, those are curses. And so if you obey God's ways, you will be blessed. And one of the most famous blessings here is Baruch Atah Bevoecha, Baruch Atah Betzetecha. Blessed be you when you come, and blessed be you uh, when you go. Those are some of the blessings, but the main point I want to deal with is this whole question of if you follow God's way, you'll be blessed, and if you don't, you'll be cursed. And there's many ways to understand it. Obviously, you could understand it on a little literal level. That either individuals or societies that follow the ideas of the Torah will be blessed in enduring societies, and if you don't, they'll be punished. Certainly there's a sense of conditional there. And I want to read you a passage by a really interesting, in a book called Jews and Judaism in the 21st Century. It's a brand new book edited by a classmate of mine, Ed Feinstein, and it's really interviews with five very prominent or rabbis. Two Orthodox, Rabbi David Hartman of Jerusalem and Rabbi Yitz Greenberg. One Reform, the head of Hebrew Union College, Rabbi David Ellenson. And two very prominent conservative rabbis, Rabbi Harold Kushner and Rabbi Harold Schulweis. And Rabbi Schulweis says the following, which is directly related to this conditional notion in the Torah portion that if you follow God's ways, you'll be blessed, and if you don't, you'll be cursed. He says that there's <clears throat> William James once said, in dealing with the question of optimism or pessimism, that he prefers the word meliorism, M-E-L-I-O-R-I-S-M. It's the capacity for improvement, but not the automatic assumption that things are going to be better tomorrow. He also quotes a former Yeshiva University teacher of his, who once said, you have to understand that when you ask questions about optimism or pessimism, you must answer like a Navi, like a prophet. The prophet always said one word before everything. He predicted, im, if. Everything is contingent, Rabbi Shulay says. If we are a mature community, if we learn to love each other, if we study, if we transmit our knowledge to our children and our children's children, there will be an optimistic end. If we do not, it will not automatically mean survival. Now, why do I make such a point about that? 
listen to the opening words of chapter 28. If you obey the Lord your God. And then in verse 9, if you keep the commandments of the Lord. In verse 13, if only you obey and faithfully. Verse 15, but if you do not obey, if, 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 im, im, im. So as Rabbi Shobai said, when you're thinking about optimism and pessimism, it's conditional, as the prophets taught us. If we are a mature community, if we learn to love each other, if we study, if we transmit our knowledge, that I think is the critical lesson. To want blessings in the world, we have to do our part to help ensure an optimistic end.